What's up everybody? Welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we're going to be taking a look at a Honeycrisp apple flavored tea and the Platinum Century 3776 Celluloid. So this tea I have reviewed before. This was in my um, uh, Pilot Falcon video that I did like a long time ago. Um, but this one, um, I honestly, I, I thought I'd finished this like a long, long time ago. Um, and I literally just found this one hidden in the back of my tea cupboard, um, which I am slowly making my way through. Um, and let's just say like it has been taking me forever to do that. Just saying. Um, but I found this one and one other hidden away in my tea cabinet. So I had this one last night and I thought I would want to talk to you guys about it because I'm sure they're going to bring it back out. They always seem to bring it back out every year. Um, and when I watched back my original review on this, um, I seemed to, to really like it. I don't know if I really like it anymore. <laughs> um, potentially it could just be because it's old, but to be honest, I mean, like, the packaging is still sealed. There's no holes in it. Uh, so freshness still should be okay. But I didn't, it's, it's not bad. I, I didn't hate it. I just, I didn't love it as much as I seem to in the video. Um, and it, it disappointed me a little bit from what I remembered liking about it. Um, so the ingredients are apple, sweet blackberry leaf, green tea, hibiscus, apple pomace, uh, pear, natural pear, and apple flavoring. Um, and that's, that's it. That's all that's in it. Um, so it is a green tea that's supposed to take like, taste like a uh, honey crisp apple. Um, but to me, like even though it's green tea, it almost tastes like it should be like a rooibos tea. Um, and I'm not the biggest fan of rooibos flavors. Um, I just, I don't know, I thought this was like a really thin tea, like there wasn't a whole lot going on. You definitely get hit with like kind of the tartness of the apple. Um, you definitely get hit uh, with a little bit of that like pear undertone. Um, but there really wasn't a whole lot and it's kind of tart, um, which I know Honeycrisp Apple is, but I don't know, it's weirdly tart and sweet at the same time. So I'll still drink this one just so that I, you know, can say that I officially drank the whole thing. Um, but I don't know if I would actually buy it again. It's interesting. My last review was really positive and this one's kind of like on the fence. Uh, but I guess that just goes to show how your tastes change, um, you know, as you kind of grow throughout your tea experience. Um, and one thing that changes too is the love of pens and your style of what you want in a pen. But for those of you that know me, know that forever the Platinum 3776 has always been my favorite. So this is their regular like resin line that I have done a review of as well. And suddenly my lighting just popped. Um, I have done a review, I'll link that in the iCard. Um, I have the regular line uh, in a fine, medium, and broad nib uh, in the uh, Chartreuse Blue. Um, the Bourgogne and uh, Goulet brought out a special like black with uh, like sparkles in it um, a while back. <clears throat> so I bought all those, I have all those, and they are all um, the resin but I'd never had a chance to get a celluloid version. Uh, so when somebody contacted me um, and asked if you know he could send me some pens uh, to review and to try out, pff, I was like, heck yeah, man. <laughs> um, and this was one of them and I am so happy he did because you know, I love this 3776, but I have three of them already. So I was like, do I really need another one when I was looking at the celluloid ones? You know, how different can it really be? But you really do feel a difference. You feel a good difference, actually, um, in the material between them. And I really, really like it. Uh, side by side, the celluloid is actually a little bit thinner than the regular 3776. And it is a hair bit shorter as well. Um, so it's definitely a slightly smaller pen. Um, the grip section of the two, if I can pop it up here, is pretty much the same. Um, so there's really not much difference as far as the grip section. This one's a teeny bit narrower, um, but nothing really too crazy. These are both fine nibs, the one, the one that I'm showing you here. Um, this was my very first 
3776. Um, but uh, yeah, and like the, the section where the threads are, because this is a more narrow pen, there's no step up whatsoever. The threads just go into the body and it's so smooth. Whereas on the uh, resin version of the 3776, there is a step up um, that you can feel definitely. Um, it doesn't bother you when you're writing at all, unless you held your pen literally like way back here. Um, but in the cell, um, uh, celluloid version, that isn't an issue at all. Um, so when you are holding the pen, no matter where you hold it, there's no issue. This one is slightly shorter, um, but nothing to make it unusable. Um, you can still post it. I'm not gonna post this hard because it's not my pen, um, but it does post quite securely. For me, it becomes back weighted at that point, but like I say in all of my videos, um, I'm a little bit sensitive to posting because I normally never do. Um, so those are the basic differences between the two. Um, of course, you have a gold ring uh, by the nib section here. You don't on the resin. You still get the same gold trim at the bottom of the grip section. And you'll notice at the end, it just continues into one material. There's no uh, different end cap here. They both use the platinum... Uh, proprietary cartridge so that's no different um, the one thing that is different though with this is if I kind of open up this guy here you'll see how like this section here um, extends so that the converter actually goes um, into that metal part on the celluloid version that doesn't happen so there's actually a piece uh, that you can't see because it's inside the converter. There's a black piece that extends out, uh, like literally right here, that extends out and goes into the converter to about here. So this is the end of the converter. This is the entire converter here. Um, so it's a little bit different, but it uses the exact same converter, super secure, um, no issues to be had. I don't know why it's different, maybe because it's a little bit different material, maybe because it's a little bit shorter, I don't know, but um, either way, works the same and it's great. Um, I just cannot get over the feel of this pen. Um, and the only other difference is the lettering around the center band, which you won't be able to see, but I'll, I'll put it up anyways. Um, you'll see it in the closer up. So around both of them, they say the same thing. So it says platinum, uh, made in Japan, 3776. But on this pen, it's uh, like kind of like scroll work almost. Um, it's like written kind of flowy cursive writing. Whereas on the resin, it's just big block letters. Um, so it's slightly fancier. <laughs> Um, but other than that, the actual performance of the pen, the way that it writes, the way that it feels, pretty much identical. Um, the, like I said, the only difference is all the aesthetics, um, which I'm almost not okay with the fact that I was able to try this pen out because now I really, really want one. <laughs> um, so this is the uh, tortoise shell um, version. You can get a koi version, which is, uh, I think, pink and white. Um, I've never seen that one in person, so I don't know if it's more pink or if it's more red. I've only seen photos, um, and from different retailers, the photos make them look different. Uh, but I really like this pen. I might be in trouble, and I might be in trouble because it's expensive. It is all celluloid, um, and so retail pricing, again, Sometimes people are like, you always quote the high price. I do that for a reason. <laughs> um, I always quote the retail pricing because then if you look into aftermarket locations, um, you'll see that there is usually a bit of a discount. Um, that said, I will caution you with aftermarket. Just do your research. Make sure that you're not getting swindled. If it seems like it's going to be too good of a deal, it probably is. Um, but anyways, Retail pricing uh, for this pen in Canada, because our dollar sucks, uh, is $4.75. Retail pricing in the US is gonna be around $3.55. If you order directly from Japan, you're gonna get it for a lot less because that's where these babies are born. Um, so it's definitely an expensive 
pen. Um, but man, do I love the feel of this. Oh, I love it so much. I love it so much. I love it so much. So basically they've just taken my favorite pen and made it better. <laughs> um, so let me flip the camera around and I'm going to show you how that guy can write. Okay, so we have some Clairefontaine paper that is a little bit marked up from the previous page. <laughs> um, the ink for today is Roaring Klingner Verdigris, or however you pronounce that. And, of course, you have the Platinum 3776 14 karat Fine Gold Nib. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, so, this one uh, is the one that, uh, you know, obviously I was lent by. Um, this one here is the one that I've been using for a billion years. Um, both of them are fine nibs. Both of them are just as wet. I will say this one is a slight bit more feedbacky um, than this one here. Now, I don't know if that is just luck or if maybe they put a little bit more care into the celluloid versions, I'm not sure. But this one is actually a little bit smoother than the um, resin version. Um, you still do get some feedback. It is a very fine nib, uh, but look, and this is a relatively dry ink, guys. Uh, so it just, oh, yeah, <laughs> it's just beautiful. So it's very nice and wet. Um, you do get a little bit of line variation, but not really much to be had. It just gives you like kind of like a response system. So if you watch the nib here, you know, you can see it bounce with you. Um, so it's still like, it's not like a flex nib or anything, but it's kind of like a shock absorber on the car so that when you're writing, it really flows with your hand. And I, oh gosh, I love it. <laughs> I just love it. Uh, reverse is basically the same as like regular writing. It feels really nice. Actually, there's, it doesn't really feel much different than writing like regular. The only thing I would say is maybe it's slightly drier, slightly thinner, but not really a whole lot. Um, so it's definitely good to go. I've never had any issues with any of my Platinums, this one included, um, for hard starts, for skips, for any of that. They've always been 100% reliable. And I just, I can't say anything better about it because this is just a freaking fabulous pen. And man, do I not want to give this back. Um, one thing I will say is that you do see the line here where like, I guess the material came together. Um, that bothered me for about half a second. <laughs> and now I don't care. That's the one thing that I, I just look over because I absolutely love this pen. Um, so oh, I want one. Okay, guys, do I recommend it? Heck Yes, um, but that's gonna be it for me today. If you like the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you really like the video and haven't yet done so already, hit that icon in the middle and subscribe to the channel for new videos every Monday and Friday and the occasional Q&A on Tuesday. Don't be afraid of that comment section and definitely don't be afraid to kind of, you know, start discussions going in the comment section below uh, and really get this community growing. Uh, guys, as always, I will see you next time. Bye.